Hi guys, I'm Jade Frost, a registered dietitian, and today we're going grocery shopping. But before we do that, let's head over to the planning phase. The planning phase might seem a bit much in the beginning, but once you've got your existing lists going, it will be much easier in the future and has the potential to actually save you time, money and helps you to eat healthier. So you guys can find your free PDF in the first comment below, which I'll pin. On the PDF guide, you'll see that I've made check boxes. So as you're shopping, you can check off items that you have put in your cart. I've left all of the boxes checked, so you can just uncheck items you don't need while you're shopping, uncheck those. I've also included text boxes for you to add extra items and be more specific with certain items. So you need to save this document on your phone for you to be able to save it. Um, please, 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 remember to save so that you don't lose any of your additions if you scroll down you'll see i also included room for you guys to add other items you might need toiletries detergents cleaning materials and then i also left a space to add any notes that you might have there are different approaches you can take with regards to planning depending on how detailed you'd like to go a simpler method would involve you having a piece of paper, writing down which meals you'd like to have for the week. You could split them up and make maybe two plant-based suppers, five animal protein suppers, and then decide which starches you'd like to go with that. Also list which convenient lunch items you'd like to have, like bread, crackers, the fillings you'd like to put on them, example, peanut butter, um, tuna, eggs, and then also list which types of fruits. You, you could decide on maybe three or four fruit varieties for the week. And then deciding on vegetables, maybe you'd want to get four to six different varieties of vegetables for the week. And then essentially you draft your grocery list from that. So there are definitely cons to this method. The biggest one being the potential to under purchase, which has plenty of knock on effects. Uh, this could result in you or your family uh, resorting to less nutritious uh, foods and having less nutritious suppers simply because you ran out of options. Another con is that it may result in over purchasing, which means there could be a potential wastage of food. However, this method is very quick and uncomplicated. Opposite to this, you would have a more detailed approach. So this is something you would more do with a registered dietitian who could guide you along the process. So what I've done for my family is looked at the number of portions or servings of each food group we would need for the entire month because my mom prefers to do monthly grocery shopping. And basically from that, I have listed everything to make sure that we get our recommended servings for the month. So this allowed my mother and I to see if our nutritional needs were being met within the budget that we had available. And if not, to see where we could cut back on our expenses. One of the major sections we were able to cut back on and see where we were spending a lot of money was our protein section. Animal proteins are quite expensive. What we were able to do was replace some of the animal proteins with plant proteins. Example is beans, lentils, split peas, and by doing so, you can either supplement your animal protein meals and have just less animal proteins and then add some legumes to that uh, in either like a 50-50 split, an 80-20 split, or you could actually replace all the animal protein on some nights with on protein. However, there are a few budget-friendly protein sources and I've shared this post on my Instagram profile so you can go and take a closer look at them over there. And then we get to our fruit and vegetable section. So over here you have three main different options, fresh, frozen and canned. And frozen and canned are just as nutritious as fresh. So don't feel that in the transition to a healthier um, lifestyle and eating patterns you have to opt for fresh all the time. I know that that does come with a con of lots of preparation potentially and time that you might not necessarily have. And on lots and lots of evenings this is the case for us here as well and it actually comes in 
handy to have canned and frozen veg. It's make sure that even on busy nights where you don't have time to prepare fresh vegetables, you can still have veggies in your meal. However, you do need to keep in mind that due to the extra processing, frozen and canned vegetable items and fruit items will be pricier than fresh. Another thing here in South Africa where we have load shedding quite often, Load shedding can affect the quality of your frozen items due to the fluctuation in temperatures. So in that instance, you might want to opt for more canned varieties. And then we get to dairy. These items are also quite expensive. So which options you choose here will depend on your preferences and also your nutritional requirements. And then when it comes to starches, I am going to put this out there. A variety of foods can be very expensive in South Africa. So I know that here in SA it is much more expensive to actually purchase bulk like maize meal or rice and then change with whatever you're serving with the maize meal. Um, this is much more cost effective than for example trying to get um, brown rice which is really expensive, butternut, sweet potato and having that variety of starches can actually be quite expensive and you might not get the same value or quantity. Um, for that same amount of money. So in this case, I would look at keeping maybe the bulk rice and maize meal and then looking at how we can vary the proteins that we're having and include plant proteins as well. And then looking at how we can add inexpensive vegetables to that maize meal, example, spinach, cabbage, carrots. And then we get to sugars and fats. And here is where you can save a lot of money depending on how much you're consuming a practical example there's four people in the household each person has about three teaspoons of sugar in the morning afternoon and evening so that's three times a day that equals 36 teaspoons of sugar per day 36 teaspoons of sugar equals about 144 grams of sugar per day multiply this by 30 days in a month and that equals about 4.3 kgs of sugar a month Practically, this is about two times two and a half kg bags of sugar a month. In terms of costs, this usually comes around to about 90 rand total a month. So if you could half the amount of sugar your family is having by dropping from three teaspoons to one and a half teaspoons, or maybe just consuming it less times in the day, that means you could half your sugar expenditure to about 45 rand, leaving another 45 rand open for more nutritious items such as fruit, vegetables, pulses like your beans, lentils, dairy items such as yogurt, milk, etc. So not only for our bank balance will it be beneficial for us to cut back on these items, but also beneficial towards our health. And then basically at the end, once I've added everything up, I've got a detailed list of the groceries we'll need for the month. And I'm able to plan from week to week what meals we'll be having. And I do have some peace of mind knowing that it should be enough to last us. So a dietitian will be able to factor in any dietary or nutritional requirements that you or your family may have and be able to recommend specific food choices that align with your nutritional goals and any health issues you might have. So now that we have our grocery list, we need to try and figure out how we can save cash and really maximize on our available budget. And I've broken this down into three steps. The next important thing to do before you go grocery shopping is to scan for specials on websites. You can either go to specific store sites or you can go to a site like Guzzle that hosts catalogs for all stores and specials offered. This way you can determine which store would be best for you to visit. Now I have to say that we are pretty lucky to have access to various kinds of stores and the available transport to actually get there and come back with whichever goods we've bought. And I know that this is not a reality for everyone. Uh, last year I was out transport and basically what I did was I would take a cab and do my main shopping, buying most of my non-perishables as well as toiletries, cleaning materials, and do maybe bi-weekly um, trips to the store. And then I would purchase my fresh produce on a weekly basis. Another thing you can do is make use of online grocery shopping services. So a lot of the online grocery stores are actually putting the service out there. I know of pick and pay and checkers that are doing it. So depending on your budget this could perhaps be something that you could look into and then guys eat before you go studies have actually shown that shopping on an empty stomach leads to greater impulse buys making the next tip even harder to stick to 
during your shopping, try your best to stick to your list. We use this little list with a pen to check off items as we went shopping, but you could of course use the PDF that I created for you guys. And then check for deals on fresh produce. These you won't be able to determine before going to the shop. Uh, a lot of times you'll only see it when you get there. Um, another tip is to buy seasonal veg. Check for combos. And with a combo like the one they usually have at Pick and Pay, we tend to opt for the vegetables with a longer shelf life. This way we know it will last. You really make me wanna fly. Cross most stores have loyalty cards, so make use of them. These extra points come in handy on months where budget is being stretched, but make sure to use up the points before they expire. I don't know if you guys know about this app. I recently found out about it. It's called Snap and Save. Uh, this is not sponsored, by the way. Basically, you book coupons on the app and then you go shopping. And after your shopping, you basically snap pictures of your till slip. They take a couple of days to process it. And whichever coupons were valid and applied to the items that you bought, they will refund you. And once you exceed over 50 Rand, if I'm not mistaken, you have the option to cash out. And then check those special deals that you got for fruit and veggies and see which items you need to use first to prevent spoilage and ultimately wastage. So on this day I checked out the green beans that we bought since they were pretty cheap and they were actually in pretty good condition and you can see here I used them in the meal that we had that day. Let's talk long term. To save cash on fresh produce, you could consider growing your own. Here I'm trying my hand at growing peppers, tomatoes, chili, celery, garlic. Uh, we don't have any garden space in the back of our yard and unfortunately, despite the front being very good soil um, for growing, people have stolen our harvest numerous times. So I've started trying out container gardening. I will say that containers, soil, etc. can rake up some costs. You don't have to buy all your seeds though. Some produce can be grown from existing fruits and vegetables. I've also seen people successfully use old tires as well so if you have access to those that could be an option i hope that you found this video useful and that you'll be able to use the grocery list and tips that i gave out here in your next shopping trip if you enjoyed the video remember to like subscribe share it with someone who might need the information as well and i will see you next time